Hey everybody, how are you? Um, this is a new one of my latest uploads. Um, the first one I've done of the um, Memphis Bell, but I thought I'd do a um, video of all the Airfix kits that I'm sort of build that I have and um, are currently building at the minute um, before I go to bed, as it is literally right now, 20 past 1 a.m. in the morning. Um, anyway, so here we go. Um, this one here is um, off. This um, kit here is of the Memphis Bell, which is a B-17. Uh, you know, yeah, B-17, which is an American bomber built by Boeing. Now, as you know, the Memphis Bell is a pretty famous aircraft. But, you know, one of the world's most famous B-17s. Um, there will be, and there's a film dedicated to the Memphis Bell that came out in 1990, which was filmed not too far from here, actually. You know, I think it was at Binbrook, if I remember. Um, you know, um, like I said, um, I'm going to do a close-up. It's not quite finished yet. I mean, I've had a few problems with it, but here it is. You know, it's pretty good. The real Memphis Bell is um, in America under some heavy restoration somewhere in America at the minute. I'm not too sure whereabouts. I'm not up to date on that one. But in the in the film, the Memphis Bell. Right, the actual plane didn't star in that one. It was a B-17 called Sally B, which did star in that one, and that will be at East Kirkby on the 20th of July, 2013, which I'm hoping to go and see. But anyway, let's go in for a close-up on that one. Um, as we can see here, um, there are obviously some problems here. It's a bit, it's a, um, bit sort of misted here. Due to, and this is on the front end, due to I got some paint on the, some of the windows here when, when I masking tape. Well, I masking tape the windows so I could paint and get as close to the um, windows as possible. But as you can see, the masking tape didn't do a very good job, so we had to put, put some sort of stripper on it, which I used to um, remove the um, paintwork off my brushes. And as you can see, it's obviously misted it up a bit. Now, um, and as you can see here as well, this, this is a level 4 kit, which is not good for beginners. I mean, I was really annoyed when this went wrong. I'm about to tell you, I could have hit the roof because I really wanted this aircraft to come out right. Um, it's a B-17F, if I remember. Um, but there you go, here's one window. That didn't go well either. Neither did this one here. In fact, I can tell you a little story about this. I tried gluing it in, right? But what happened was when I put the glue on and tried getting it into position, it fell inside the actual fuselage. So now it's obviously stuck in there somewhere. But, you know, um, as you can see, um, I've, um, here is the gun turret. The upper, the mid-upper turret. Um, right here, so I can try and get a close-up of it. That went okay-ish. Um, but other than that, that wasn't really a problem. Now there's usually another gun that sits in this particular one. I mean, there's three different versions of the B-17. As I said, I think the Memphis Bell was the B-17F. Now, um, when it comes to putting these little gun, the um, left and um, right waste gunners guns on it well machine guns you call them waste gunners i snapped one of them by accident and um what happened there was i decided now i've got little plastic windows in place of that um but you know that's not bad this little window down here got painted over by accident there's not a lot i can do about that now but i'm annoyed with that um as we can see i've just come around here the same sort of issues happen here with paint, but as I can say, um, I managed to get most of it off very, very quickly. I removed most of that paint, so it's okay. There's still little bits left there. I don't know whether you can see, but you know, if you can't, that's okay. 
I'd be willing to comment on that on Facebook, on um, YouTube, so I've got that. I'm happy to answer any questions anybody has to ask. Oh, I'll try my best anyways. I haven't, they're still under construction. Now there's a, a rear gun turret. There's a rear guns that go here, but I haven't put them in yet. Now, uh, as you can see, this wheel here, Due to it being my fault, I missed out a part when I was building the fuselage. You know, I was a bit of an, bit of an idiot. But it happens. i still got to do some more painting. And a similar situation here. With the ball tucked. I missed out the insides as well. But hey ho. This didn't go too bad. And I think, which one is it? Yeah, this wheel here. Right, when I was doing some work on it. Or something can't remember what it was right this no, yeah it was the masking tape I was putting the masking tape on it I managed to snap this wheel off and whereabouts is it just uh, I think it's down here where the glue is snap that bit off as well so the whole thing pretty much came off so it's a bit of a makeshift repair job so I am a beginner to this and uh, as you can see here there's my other wheel this one's perfect Okay, well not exactly perfect, but that could be better. There's still um, more paint that needs doing. Uh, I will point out, I am looking for negative comments, okay, and, and advice to help me along the way. Because this is quickly becoming a hobby of mine, and an interest. So any help on negative comments would be great. Um... You know, or constructive criticism I'm yet to build here as well as I say here's the bomb bay here I could have split that in two but I wasn't sure that I didn't have a knife to, a, um, the correct tool to do it and I wasn't sure whether it would snap easy or not so I didn't bother just in case I bust it but, you know, I think I bust just almost about everything on this one now um, back to my paint work um, I wonder if you might be able to notice it does look a bit rough in some areas. I'll come over here, as you've noticed. I think, I don't know whether you can see, but it does look rough. Okay, this is before I had the proper brushes to do it. Okay, the proper ones. But it has had a repaint and a bit, and it feels quite rough as well. But I have sanded sort of this area here and on the other side and here as well and sort of here and I've sanded both the wings I don't know whether you can sort of see on most of them so I've done my best job so it's smoother um, there we go there's the engines here just a quick shot of some of the engines I mean these weren't too bad so I'm quite proud of these okay these two engines here and the other two on the other side literally quite proud of those took a while to get those up wonder whether you can actually see the inside I don't know whether you can because the light on the mobile phone but, you know I want, that's all just about to, I'll try and angle it so you can see yeah. obviously the one of the control columns on there is slightly leaning forward it's the one on the left which is basically um, the one on the left side of the aircraft which is this one here don't know whether you can see it right that's leaning forward leaning towards the uh, pilot seat whereas the other one isn't you know that hasn't been painted in there because I didn't think I'd have the skill to do it and I really should have waited even longer to build this aircraft you know starting like level ones and level twos as the fewer parts and you know make, I even had the right stuff before to, to paint it and all that lot but I didn't have it back then but hey ho things happen um, I'm running out of things to say about this plane I mean, there's plenty more work to do on it well I you could say restoration work on this as well with the paint work well, it's a lovely aircraft, my personal favourite, you know, 
as well as the Spitfire. But, you know, I'll also show you some of my other Airfix kits as well in a minute. But there she is, literally, there she is, right there, the Memphis Belle. Now this here is the Spitfire I am in the middle of building. It's a gold coloured Spitfire. Um, I'll show you what type of Spitfire it is. I've still got the box, so I'll quickly go over to the box now. See if you can see it, there it is. That's the type of Spitfire it is, and it's a 148 scale. Um, I've got at least three Spitfires. One that hasn't even been built yet. But I'll show you that one. That's it right there, and I've also got a Huracan, but you know, there you go, I think. right, um, as I say, um, this is a 148 scale, now I have had a bit of a problem with this one, with the canopy, what happened was, I'll show you the inside of it, let me have a good look, inside, I think whether you can actually see well inside there, have a good look. This one doesn't have a pilot with it, but it is completely gold. You can say I call it the Golden Spitfire. Now what happened was when it came, this still needs building as well. Now what happened was when it came to building this one, I come well, put, when it came to putting the canopy on. Um, what happened was I managed to get paint on the canopy from my fingers somehow. And it ruined the canopy and I hit the roof with that one. So obviously I'm going to have to get a spare part from Revel. Uh, yeah, a spare canopy. So I can start it again. So that one's slightly put aside. As you can see it's got clipped wings this one. You know, it does come with the option where you can put the proper wing on. And um, an optional tail as well. You know two different tails but as you can see this is the underneath of the aircraft I'll show you quickly the underneath as you can see there's plenty there that still needs building I'll try and give you a good view of the exhaust pipes there get as close as you can get to them literally as close I still need to work on my painting. There's the propeller. But you know, that's actually fairly good, I think. That one. Anyways, I'm going to another one now. Now, here is my Concorde, which I um bought at the Royal Air Force Museum in London back in October last year. Um, it's quite a large scale. I mean, I've got the box, so I'll show you that in a minute. Um, let's go for a close-up. Just a little close-up like this. My fingers name. Probably notice it's got a bit of black paint on it. In various places where it shouldn't be. Now I'll go to the underneath. Obviously I painted this separately, but somehow, well I painted the parts separately, but somehow I managed to get pet black paint here. But I suppose I, mean, well, I don't really have any more white paint because I mixed it with red paint to make it pink. So I can paint the faces on the pilots and well, some pilots that I have. And that's the underneath, but it needs more building doing. So I haven't really done any more work with it since about Christmas time or after Christmas roughly but here it is this particular one was meant to was, is now in New York and um, I found out something rather interesting when I went to um, the um, RAF Museum in Cosford which is the um, yeah it's the um, you say um, how could I put this Basically, um, uh, the museum in London and the museum in Cosford are like in some sort of partnership or something, you know. 
They're both run by the same company. And um, one of the guys there told me that this particular one that's now in New York, which is the model I've got here right in front of me, um, they were supposed to be getting that one, that particular one, but it was turned down. Um, I was hoping to see the prototype Concorde, but I forgot where it was, but I was reminded of where it actually was. And it's at, um, where was it again? Duxford, that's it. It's at Duxford. But anyways, I mean, there's quite a, um, a large, there's quite a huge amount of um, various different aircraft to see at those museums, and I would recommend it to any aviation enthusiast. Right, it, those museums are a must see. So if there are any aviation enthusiasts enthusiasts are out about there, out there somewhere definitely go you will be in for a treat right particularly at the one at Cosford because they've got a 4D experience which is absolutely epic and I mean epic if you thought 3D was epic you haven't seen anything until you've seen 4D and I mean and I seriously mean it okay going on to another one now okay now this little aircraft here is a hawk which is the same type they use in the red arrows which is the same type the red arrows have been using since the very early 1980s uh, one of the aircraft that they used to use was the hawker hunter when, when, when they were, and that was when they were first formed Anyways, I've still got the box somewhere to show the scare of this, but I'm not going to get it out. I don't want to the Memphis Bell. It just means hassle on its very early hours in the morning. But, as you can see, we're going for a mate of mine bought this for my birthday, for my 23rd birthday earlier this month. Um, as we can see, it's got one little job, two little jobs that need doing on it now. Uh, there's a little thing at the front sticking back on. It snapped off. I have to find it first and then the stick is put in on um, finally but as you can see in here the canopy's gone on fairly well fairly proud of that apart from here where there's a bit of glue I don't know whether you can see that I'll try and zoom out can you see that yeah, I'll point it out to you just in case you can't just sort of around the top here it's going to just sort of there yeah, where the tip of my finger is it's all fuzzy and misty and that because that's where the glue is okay that's not my fault as you can see as the pilots inside aren't painted at all literally that's because when I did this I really didn't think I'd have the skill to paint them whatsoever but you know as it proves out proved I do have the skill you've got the right brushes and the right know-how you know what I mean best thing to do is when you're painting paint the parts while they're still on the spruce and make sure you have the right brushes to do so it does make things a lot easier to do as I found out now I'll take you on a tour of underneath it still needs painting underneath a bit as you can see various black bits and that um, okay, as you can see, here's the front wheel. As you can see, still needs a bit more painting. Well, we've got the back wheels here, the two back landing gear. I've got a please connect to charge it right there, and. Um, here we've got the um, other landing gear just there. As you can see, this little tiny bit here, this little tiny gold bit, I'm pointing out to you. Right, it was supposed to be glued further forward, but I didn't read the instruction manual properly and glued it there. So there was something that's supposed to fit in between here. Now it can't go there because that's there. But hey ho. Things happen when you don't read things properly. Okay, and as you can see, it needs a bit more painting here. It's slightly black. Okay, that's the air intake. I 
this is a single engine aircraft, two air intakes, don't know how many pounds per thrust this does, hey ho, right, on to another plane. Right now, here is the set that I use to paint the um, brushes, or the planes, not the brushes, um, as we can see here. Uh, I've got like various different brushes of different thicknesses, as well as over here. I literally got that for my birthday as well. Um, I've got like many different paints here, literally quite a variety. I've even got like this sort of glue I use, which is good, very, very good. That is doesn't it's easy to unblock when it clogs up and that rather than ones with the needles in them I've got the sandpaper here which I used to sand down the Memphis Bell to smooth out the paintwork that's coming along quite well and here I've got a pair of tweezers which I use to sort of help build the aircraft and remove the lids off the paint as well and put them back on sometimes to remove some of the parts off the spruce which is good and I've got to use this mug here for the water this here, this tail is part of a Jaguar which I have on top of the wardrobe which I'll show you in a minute in a few minutes right now here I have parts to a um, sea fire right Literally all the bits to see fire still on the spruce. Literally painted already. God knows how many colours this has been through already. At least three. I went green, grey and sky blue. Which it is now all in order. The various different bits. Right there. I'll take on this and fuse the large bits. Right there. We've got the tail. We've got everything else here. Cockpit inside the cockpit. Like that, you've got the seats, you've got the bike, where else, where else have we got all these bits here? Literally, various bits of everything. When I say everything, I mean various bits. There you've got the pilot there as well. There are all the bits to him. Okay, I'll come out of that. And, um, these are foldable wings, you know when they're on like an aircraft carrier. So all these bits here foldable wings. There's another two pieces there on there somewhere. Okay, here's the um, original wings. Just here. This particular one, there it is. It's the Supermarine Seafire. This is what colour it's meant to be. Unfortunately I didn't have this type of colour so I thought I'd be creative or try. I've also got this set down here as well, the BBMF set, but we'll get to that a bit later on. After I've put my phone on charge because it's just given me a warning a few minutes ago about the battery. So I will be doing that in a minute or so. Okay. Here are some of the parts to the Lancaster Bomber PA474 which flies with the Battle of Britain Memorial flight. I'm very annoyed with this at the minute because I, c I can't continue building this anymore because something went, I broke a part of the aircraft and tried to improvise to fix it but things didn't go so well with that. But anyways, here's where I started here with this particular piece, the Bombay, as you can see here, if I can show you. I don't know whether you can actually see him because of the lights. It's the pilot. He is a bit bright, this light. But there he is. That's him, anyways. That's his seat, and you can see his own control column. Now, under here. You got the bombs. Literally, it's the bombs. 
there's three, there's seven bombs in here around this. There's these three here. This is the bomb bay. There's this one. It's the biggest one here. And the other three here. And now we've got the first fuselage here. First side of it. With another pilot in it. Right. This is how I've painted it so far. But I can't really do anything more with it. Here is the broken piece. So can you guess what the problem is yet? Well, when I came to building this, I snapped a vital part, which means I'm, then they didn't realise, and it flew somewhere in the room. It's a tiny little bit, and it was black, so you can't see it. And it flew somewhere in the room. Very, very tiny bit, so, you know, can't really see that. But hey, -ho, it happens. And uh, I put it in the mug, and I glued it all together without that little bit in put one part of the gun kept coming off a bit on the right closest to the camera so I put it in the in the glass that I showed you earlier overnight went to paint the Spitfire the sky blue one which is still on the spruce um, filled, the, the, filled the mug up with water unfortunately I forgot that the little thing was still in there the little gun barrel I think it is was still in there and um, filled the mug up with water. I noticed it and tried to retrieve it by slowly pouring the mug out and putting my hand in the way and I lost it down the bloody plug hole. As we can see, here's one of the wings here. There's another. With a wheel on it. There's one of the entries just there. As we can see here, there's another fuselage with a gun turret that went well. I feel I can show you to that, it's the inside of it. Now here is my F117 Nighthawk, or the Stealth Bomber, which it is mainly known as. And one of my personal, it's another one of my personal favourites. In fact, I think this plane is one of the coolest planes in the world. Um, yeah. This is a um, small scale one yet again. This is just bigger than my hand, literally, so you know, it's not too small. It's a bit dusty, as it's been on my wardrobe for quite some time. Um, but this is fully built. I'm well proud of this. It doesn't have the stickers on it, though, because they snapped. And then that did deal with nothing. But then again, it's a stealth bomber, so I thought, why bother putting them on? You know? Um, as we can see, got in, I don't know whether you can see inside the cockpit or whether the light will let you. But, you know, this is brilliant. I love this plane. I am proud of this particular model. Let me show you that view there. Literally very proud of this. No, as you can see, it's dusty here. Can you see? This is how dusty it is. Um, I did have some trouble with these two tails trying to put them on but I managed to build this within two days literally two days this whole aircraft well, no joking I mean when I say two days I mean I built it in two days right so I'm going to show you underneath of it now here we go this is the underneath of the aircraft going closer to show you You see, sort of underneath of it now. Like that. Very good aircraft is this. I love this plane to pieces. Show you the back of it quickly. Show you, you can see the engines. So the engines are. Still incredibly dusty plane, isn't it? And you can be honest with that one. Yeah, I'll let you off. You know, it's been on the wardrobe for a while. But 
There we go. Now here we have my Jaguar. Um, I've had this for over a year. A mate of mine gave this to me over a year ago. Not that long, but only a couple of months before they moved. Um, it's a very good aircraft this. Um, as you can see I've tried to do a, it, I broke it over a year ago as well due to some model motorcycles falling on top of it. Bust here, which I did, repaired, but it came off again. That's back on the, on the uh, workstation which I showed you earlier. It's kind of identical to this particular part on the other side. Just recently been painted red. Um, one of these wheels snapped off, but I can't remember which one. I suspect it's this one on this side as well. I suspect. Is well, look. no, it's this one here. Uh, I remember it being this one. So it looks like it might be. Maybe not. But as you can see, there's a, the original bomb that was put on it. There was a, I had a few problems with this one mixing weaponry. You know, it wasn't good. So recently pulled one off that was here and this bit here. I slightly bent the ring a bit. You can probably see. You know, there's plenty more to do on it. So I might be able to try and fully restore the plane if I can find all the bits and that for it. But you know, it's a good look with that one. Um, as you can see, it's full of inside. Got no pilot inside the cockpit. Literally, take these. No pilots. That's me F117 Nighthawk again. Sneaky bugger that one, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but there's the Jaguar. This is Sep Cat Jaguar, I think. Yeah, I'm not that good with aircraft, so I really don't have a lot of knowledge of aircraft. I think that the only thing I know with aircraft is they fly. That's about just about it. And um hey ho. I don't think I'll put that down. Yeah, I don't really know a lot about aircraft. But I think really the only bit I know part all I know about aircraft is they fly. Uh, hey -ho. Right, and to finish off I thought I would show you the um, Spitfire and the Hurricane, which are part of the Battle of Britain Memorial flight. As you can see, they're on top of the box. Here, that's just a quick one. Here, there's the Spitfire, which has only been painted, not been put, broken off the spruce or anything. Here's the Hurricane over here. And um, there's all the windows. And there's everything else. Oh, and one other thing, I can't forget my little RC plane, which is up there. Can you see it? I'll zoom in. That is a huge plane, that one. But I've had that two years now and haven't been able to fly it because of the um, back end on it. Literally, the back end, um, it's broken. It can be repaired. And um, also, I blew up the battery charger myself by sticking a um, amp, sticking one. one yeah, I, I managed to blow up the battery charger as well. But, you know, by sticking an adapter on it, that was too high. I had a too high a voltage for it. But you know, if you don't put the right adapters on things, you're going to blow things up. But you know, blew up my face that one. Uh, hey, hey, this one's a PA-18 Super Cub. Very, very fast aircraft is that. It's quite a large aircraft, cost me £100 for it. And I've only had it running twice, well, three times. You know, once up at Manby, which um, you can see the video to that one on YouTube. I've got it there. And the one at Legburn, where it crashes, which is quite funny, that's also on YouTube. Um, and also I tested it in the living room just you know the throttle and all the controls but that's not on YouTube 
another video of that one. But here you can see the F117 Nighthawk and maybe the Jaguar in the background just there, that's where they sit. And up there there's a photograph of me sat in a Harrier jump jet. Well in a Harrier. But, you know, thought I'd just quickly show you that one since I love that plane to bits. I yeah, can't resist that particular plane, and also Raven has my RC helicopter. Right on the speaker there, they have a little green thing. And there's my train set making an appearance. Over there on the left. But anyways. Right, I've got to get going now anyways, as it is very late. It's now 2 o'clock in the morning. I think it's because I can keep people talking forever. I'll just give you a quick shot of the train set since that's another hobby of mine but there are plenty of videos of that on YouTube so I'm not going to do any talking about that but you know hey ho a lot of work went into that 